this gets I'm, I'm giving you guys a, a, a teaser for the docu series. Only only here at Big Boss Filmworks, Motel Mafia. This, this, this has never this has never really been um, reported on, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be talked up, talked about extensively in the docu series that. Luckily, no violence erupted, but at in the aftermath of that party, you had a situation in the uh, parking lot uh, or in one of the parking structures at Caesar's Palace that the two crews, Demetrius's guys that were there and Terry's guys that were there, uh, pulled weapons on each other um, mm. and had like a standoff. And then both retreated to the estates that they had rented in the Vegas area. And again, nothing happened, but both camps were kind of preparing for, for an a issue. war that both camps thought the other camp was going to be coming to attack where they were. Wow. And you know, again, it, not, nothing ever happened to the, uh, it, from that, but... Uh, it reached the point where, where weapons were, were pulled out and pointed at the, each crew was pointing weapons at each other. That's when it starts to get messy. Yeah, and it was at Terry's birthday party. And from that point on, Terry and Demetrius stopped speaking. Wow. So that was... Uh, you guys go in all the docuseries. Yes. Oh, it's going to be hot. And that's in, uh, that was in 04. And uh, I can give a little more, in, I can give a little more uh, uh, insight, uh, insider baseball here. Um, they did start talking again for a period of time in around 2017-18. Oh, so this is after the indictment, after everybody after sat down for, yeah. for a minute. Uh, and it all fell apart when uh, Terry came out uh, from from COVID. Um, but, but, I mean, okay, from the outside looking in, that should be a good thing. Yes, but if you were paying attention to Terry's behavior in his first couple weeks or months, uh, of freedom, he was acting a lot like Demetrius was circa 2003. Yeah, but okay, and that check. wasn't lost on Demetrius. But but okay, now I'm completely talking from the outside looking in. Here the thing though, it's a difference between flossing after I've been indicted, yep, yep, yep. A, a convicted, went to jail, and now I come home and I'm balling. Then we ain't been popped yet. Yeah, and if we stay I off agree. the radar, yeah. So, you know, I, I get, I could get how you could be like, yo, bro. Demetrius felt like it was. Yo, bro, Demi you doing the same shit I was doing. Well, and, the and Demetrius's case at that point was in front of the judge. Like, whether or not he was going to get the COVID out. Uh, so, he felt like, hey, man, can you just kind of put this on pause until. Let me get done with my. Yeah. Okay, now I get that. I, I, By I, you I, coming out and. Going flashing ball. and uh, he he started Terry started Instagram this you know the minute he walked out of prison wow. right right um, and that first week or two uh, you had again it was kind of like a repeat of, of what we saw at, at Puppy's birthday party you had a like a, like a diplomatic convoy of pop culture uh, celebrities coming into Detroit to kiss welcome Terry yeah. home and kiss the ring. Yeah. And you had a line out the door at his mama's house, at Lucille's house, the, the family home that they've had forever right. in uh, uh, right on the border, like Inkster, Allen Park, right. Southwest Detroit. Right, right. Uh, it, you had a, a line out the door of just neighborhood fathers taking their sons there to, like, meet Terry, like they're going to meet LeBron James. Okay. And then you had Fabulous, and you had LL Cool J, and you had Nelly, and you had Puffy. They all came into town. Yeah, uh, I mean, right. you come see your friends when they come home, yeah. right? And you know, Fifty gave him a uh, um, a Rolls Royce, a Phantom a, or a Ghost or something, as a uh, welcome home present. So, and it was all being chronicled on on social media. And then Fifty was stirring the pot by doing kind of victory laps, co opting the BMF, you know, legacy and reputation. And then I don't know how, if you were paying attention to that, but he was like tweeting at. Irv Gotti and tweeting at um, some other perceived rivals in the uh, rap game, right. basically being like, "It's on now. My boys are home." And oh, Fifty good at right. He, he's a marketing genius when it comes to that. But kind of I'm thing. saying that was he just, stir, it was just stirring up yeah, a, lot, a lot of 
the belief that the U.S. attorney was like, I told you, I told you if you let these guys out, they were going to act a fool. Mm-hmm. Right. And, I, and, I, and, and I got no problem saying this, that, and I've talked to Demetrius about this, and I, I, I said this when, in my interview in the docuseries, there's nothing that scares the U.S. government more than an African-American male with influence over millions of people. That's a fact. Facts. Facts. And, facts. And facts. Demetrius, again, he, we could talk about how this society idolizes criminals and you know where the, the moral compass is on. That's beside the point. The fact is, right now, Demetrius Flannery is a voice in the African-American community. And if he was out, he'd be even more of a voice that probably rivals very, very few people in in the world. Right. I mean, why let... And, that, and the, the ability to galvanize and mobilize, um, just, it, they, they sit there being like, is he going to use that for good or for bad? Yeah. You no, know, I mean, he, it's real. What? And I think the, for the, Larry Hoover, I think... It, I was, was going to say, say, I was gonna say look, I think your point is applicable to Larry Hoover too, right? The difference, though, is you can, it definitely is applicable. Okay. The difference though, I, I, I uh, the nuance that I see in it is that Larry Hoover, well, we know for sure he's responsible for one cold-blooded murder. And I would guess he's been responsible for dozens mm. of cold-blooded gangland But he only convicted of one, right? Convicted of one, right. I mean, so a lot, in our world, but my point is people Demetri- do 20 years for one murder yeah. all the time. My point home. is Demetrius wasn't a violent criminal, and yeah. I think Larry Hoover yeah. is, or yeah. was. Or was, because the guy's done, what, yeah. 40 years? So, yeah, Larry Hoover's been in prison since 73. Uh, he's 70 years old right now. 73. Um, what's that? Mm-hmm. 27, no, 48? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. The reason he's still locked up ain't because he killed one guy. No, so it's, he was. It's his influence, so, right. And what he represents. Yeah. And then he got hit with a oh, huge he racketeering case, case and case. federal racketeering case later. While but he was, was locked but up, but there was no violence involved in that. While he was locked up, even though there was some fallout murders, that I'm sure he, he had some <laughs> role in. But uh, yes, I think that's in terms of sway over people and influence. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think yes, and, and the, the the difference also I think is you can debate whether or not black mafia family still exists. There is no debate that the Gangster Disciples are probably still the biggest uh, urban street gang in America. And Whose tentacles go? Who go all across the... St- I, right. you know, I was just speaking um, to our mutual friend. Um, I was completely unaware. Really. I mean, everybody knew of the Gangster Disciples. You, you know of them, right? Um, but shout out to Big Mike, 6 9 uh, out, of, out of Chicago. Mike Covington, um, Anyway, I ended up hiring a guy, this huge man, which is obviously 6'9", <laughs> both in height and, and width. <laughs> but anyway, so he was, he's, i just say he um, comes from that neighborhood where they're... The, the, GDs? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I brought him in because I was having some security issues in Atlanta with my businesses. Immediately once he got on my team, my security issues were resolved. Like I mean, so through our friendships and again, shout out to Big Six Nine. So I just, I, I, to your point though, I just I forgot real quick. When you start introducing me to some of the guys, these guys were involved in like real estate, condo development. I mean that that organization. What's the Black Mafia? I mean, it's not just drugs. Yeah, yeah, I was, I didn't mafia. know. They ain't they. Yeah, they they. That's a real thing. It ain't Crips man. and Bloods. It ain't no Crips. And, there you yeah. go. That's what they are. Not that they and, are like. And uh, into if you bu- yeah, every, every strata of the economy. I think there's yeah. some middle ground here because you believe the U.S. government, Larry Hoover from his his prison cell at the Supermax in Florence, Colorado, is puppeteering the entire organization. I, I don't think that's true. That's not possible. I, in fact, I don't think that's possible, like you just said. Yeah. Um, but I do believe he has... He still has power in the organization. Is still considered the chief, the top the guy in chief. the organization, <laughs> and still <laughs> makes policy decisions to a degree that he can. Mm-hmm. And I know that there was a case in the last couple of years that I reported on uh, where 
the government contends that he was involved in selecting the new GD administration for the for you know the national GD administration, mm -hmm. and that he passed word uh, in a Bible. But a, a, a Bible that he had written messages on was passed through a prison system Still. to someone. Who and they got out, got out the system to the streets. Yeah, and then the, the guy that he tapped was, um, I believe it's the first non-Chicago, and I'm blanking on his name right now, but the first non -Chicago. It's time to really tell a great untold Detroit story because it kind of covers Detroit at its at its zenith. Very interesting story. We decided that we were going to make a movie. All right, Rich Rossi with you and with Motown Mafia. I'm with Courtney Lewis Stevens. Lewis Stevens, Courtney Brown. Uh, Courtney Brown Jr. And uh, Alan Al Prophet Bradley. And this is an entrepreneurial, inspirational story too because again, you know, I'm a real estate retail guy. You know, that's what my skill set is. Um, but I'm a businessman, so I was like, you know, we just, we're gonna do it. You know, sometimes when you got a dream, you won't have all the answers on how you're gonna do what you're gonna do. But what made this one unique was not so much the crime, but the intertwining with Detroit's history and the Motown era and kind of the economic decline of Detroit. And it's really the story of uh, a family and, from some perspectives, it's has a happy ending, like you said. For others, it didn't have a happy, <laughs> happy ending. Right, right.